All right, welcome back. Well, we're turning our attention now to some politics. Well, we have uh, Yunus Otanko, who is a former presidential candidate of the NCP, General from Abuja. We also have Fesu Sokoye, the National Commissioner, Chairman, Information and Voter Education Committee of INEC. Well, both of them will be talking to us about uh, a recent matter. Well, it's got to do with the court's ruling on... Uh, upholding what uh, Mr. Yusuf, I'm sure Unisa, you'll be happy about this one because the court did say INEC cannot, they didn't go through required procedure to deregister some over 20 political parties, even though INEC has said they're going to appeal. But it means that uh, it's not Uhuru yet. Yeah, um, Templin, uh, thank you very much. Let me use this opportunity to congratulate um, uh, my colleagues uh, on the victory on, uh, on the issue of the court. The truth is that, yes, it's not Uhuru yet, but then we need to take into context the two situations that really happened that, uh, that made it very difficult now for us to start thinking that we have to end up at the Supreme Court. First of all, um, the, first case that, the first case that we took to court was a preemptive measure before the ele before uh, the pronouncement by INEC in February 6. Uh, our thinking was that uh, we know the rudiment of INEC. Uh, normally, after four or four years of election, they will go through fact finding and eventually, based on the laws that have been provided at that period in time, they would deregister political party and some will be left behind. So we now took a preemptive measure by going to the court and uh, trying to stall INEC from proceeding in the registration of the political parties. Now, uh, our intention, ab initio, was that we know that some of the political parties have not run the full circles of election. And then even as it is, those who are already registered as political party have not completed all of these processes as regard to local government election and some other election, including Edo and uh, Ondo election as the case may be. But unfortunately for INEC, INEC was hasty, as I usually said, that they decided to just deregister political party based on the laws that they are, because they seem to be uh, arguing that they are following the positions of the law as it were. And that is the reason why we took the matter to court. In the case of the NUP, the NUP is challenging INEC for saying that they do not have the power to register. No, we are not saying that because INEC, as constituted by law, have their own right to execute the powers that have been given to them. But whether it is done according to the uh, process or, 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 the, uh, or the process of law is another issue. So, on our own part, we are happy that the court looked at our own case and then gave us a right that, yes, we were deregistered. Uh, um, lack of following the process of the, uh, of, of the law. And then we are now asking that that process must be followed so that everybody could be free. Because you see, um, sovereignty belongs to people, to the people. And democracy is about the government of the people, by the people, for the people. So any law that has not been followed according to the right and protecting the right of the people is ultraviolent, of course, and null and void. And that, I think that is what the court really did on behalf of the political parties. And we're grateful to that. Okay, we'll hear from INEC as well when we return in just a moment. Please stay with us. Welcome back. Well, uh, Mr. Fesu Sukoye also joins us. Well, I know that INEC has said that they're going to appeal this, but why would INEC want to do that? Because it comes across to people as though, what's the point in doing that? Well, uh, the, the point in doing that is that um, uh, on the 29th day of July 2020, uh, the National Unity Party of Nigeria, uh, having lost uh, the suit he filed against the Independent National Electoral Commission before the Federal High Court approached the Court of Appeal, Abuja Judicial Division, uh, seeking for an order setting aside the decision of the Federal High Court. And uh, the Court of Appeal looked at the matter, you know, you know, holistically, and made a determination that the Commission has the power, has powers under Section 225A of the Constitution to deregister political parties, and also made a determination that the commission exercises administrative powers uh, uh, constructively uh, in deregistering uh, the National Uni uh, Unity Party of Nigeria and the other political parties um, they made refer reference to. And the, the National Unity Party of Nigeria is saying that they are not happy with that particular decision and have appealed to the Supreme Court 
in relation to the decision. Now, uh, the same Court of Appeal, in the case of the Advanced Congress of Democrats and 32 others, uh, when the matter came before the Court of Appeal, the Court of Appeal also now went ahead to say that the Independent National Electoral Commission did not follow due process in the registering uh, the Advanced Congress of Democrats and the 22 political parties. And as far as the Commission is concerned, the issues that were before the Court of Appeal in relation to the issue of the National Unity Party of Nigeria and the issues that were before the Court in relation to the issue of Advanced Congress of Democrats are clearly the same thing. So we have two conflicting orders, and the Commission is not in a position to pick and choose which of two conflicting uh, court judgments to obey. So that's why we want to appeal to the uh, uh, Supreme Court so that we can have a, some level of finality in terms of, one, the powers of the Independent National Electoral Commission uh, to the registered political parties under Section 225A of the Constitution, and also the administrative processes and procedures that the Commission takes in terms of making a determination whether a political party uh, has not met the threshold uh, for continued existence. Well, for our, our viewers, they may also want to see what the provisions of uh, Section 225A as amended, you know, is, which is what you are seeing on the screen now. But then there are some issues to ponder as far as that matter is concerned. Uh, for look, look at what the law says, you know, that the INEC does have power to, to, to deregister a political party if there is a breach in any of the requirements for registration, uh, if they fail to win at least 25% of votes cast in one state of the federation in a presidential election or one local government of the state in a governorship election. I think perhaps this is one of the issues, uh, uh, Mr. Okoye. Uh, so people are wondering, I mean, uh, some others might also be asking the question, is this about a general election, or does it include staggered elections as well? Because the Constitution doesn't seem to be explicit on that. No, no, no. The Constitution is explicit. Section 225A of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria provides that the Independent National Electoral Commission shall have power to register a political party for A, breach of any of the requirements for registration, and B, failure to win. So... The Constitution is not cast in futuristic terms. It's cast in relation to what has already taken place. So any political party uh, that uh, uh, is claiming that it should not be registered must show concretely that the elections that have already been conducted, that it made the constitutional requirement in terms of the elections that have been con uh, uh, conducted. But the political parties went into court claiming that they have the capacity of winning futuristic elections. And the Constitution is not cast in futuristic terms. And that was exactly what the Court of Appeal in the case of Uni uh, National Unity Party uh, of, of, of Nigeria said. And so none of the political parties, none of the 74 political parties deregistered has come out to say that they met any of the provisions of Section 225A of the Constitution. And if any of them can come out to say that they won a cancellorship election in even the uh, elections uh, conducted by the State's Independent Electoral Commission, we will restore that particular political party uh, as a registered political party. But none of them is, uh, has come out to say that they won any seat. What they are saying is that we should give them the leeway, we should just wait, and that there is a possibility that if elections is conducted um, in, a, in, in a particular state, in relation to a local government election, they, that they have the capacity to win. That's exactly what they are saying. Hmm. Well, Mr. Tanko, so if that's the point that you're holding on to, what part of law are you going to cite on that? I know it, it was very clear. Just the, the point of law that he just mentioned, that um, the political party have a right to go full circle of the election. It's very, very clear. But you did not allow the political parties to go full circle, but you take a decision even before. That was what we are challenging. And then the law is very, very clear and explicit. Until those particular circle of election are completed, before you can take an action, you can't shave a man's head in absence. Let him be there so that you can shave his head. But in this situation, we have not concluded these elections. And we have proved, a lot of us have proved the capacity to win election. Koa Party, for example, had a, won an election, uh, local government elections. But they are deregistered. And I am on, on, on sound footing that they even wrote INEC telling them that they won an election. And 
we have shown in the past that we have capacity, despite the fact that we have situations on our hand that is beyond our own holding. For example, I keep on mentioning that we have won a state election in, in the state of AKT before, state assembly. So that shows that we have the capacity. In fact, we can even go beyond what we are taking, considering the situation that is happening around the country at the moment now, where the political parties that are already in power has, has lost all the confidence of, of the people. So what gives you that particular feeling that if an election takes place, that we may not have the opportunity of winning election? We should be optimistic as Democrats, and we are. We believe that the opportunity comes, we can take that particular. That's why we want to major, some of us are even majoring our action more on local government election, which is part of the law, so that we can be able to win election and show that. And in any case, if we continue to say that these particular parties were not re were the registered because they didn't win elections, what about if the situation comes about that you are saying that you are going to register other political parties based on the fact that you did it? So it doesn't really make sense. You have to give the political parties the opportunity to win. But we are not challenging the powers of INEC as regard to whether they, they have the powers to register or not. But we are focusing our attention at the moment on this particular matter. And don't forget, there are a series of other cases coming up. So we should be prepared to take it. That's why we, it's not good for us to take the hasty decision. We take a holistic decision so that at the end of it all, we will not have a situation that we are having at the moment now. So we will, we will pray that even if we take this matter to the Supreme Court, uh, we will be vindicated. And it's very, very clear that we, as uh, we are arguing, Professor uh, Tokoy is a lawyer. I have been with lawyers for all my life, and we've been fighting this particular cause. But the judiciary who have the right to make pronouncement on the issue has said that the process was not followed. So uh, we don't have any argument on this particular matter. We have gone to court, which is which I know very well that INEC is a respecter of rules and regulation of the law. And of course, they will, of course, consider the position of the law as is being said by the uh, Court of Appeal. Well, Mr. Okoye, uh, when you say uh, the law, the constitution, doesn't consider futuristic elections, what do you mean? Because uh, the full circle of elections, maybe you want to uh, educate us now, what is the full circle of elections in Nigeria? Uh, Ondo election is coming, Edo election is coming, so if it the party has been deregistered, they will not be able to be a part of that election, and it's still part of that uh, cycle of election, is it not? In the case of uh, the National Unity Party of Nigeria, the Court of Appeal went ahead to interpret the provisions of Section 225A of the Constitution relating to the legislation of political parties and said that the provision is very clear and that we should give it its ordinary, ordinary meaning. And the ordinary meaning of this particular provision is to the effect that we must interpret failure to win as failure to win elections that have already uh, taken place. The Court of Appeal also said that the NUP cannot, in all honesty and with good conscience, argue that the Commission should wait for them until they are able to win a futuristic election before they can be deregistered. And the Court of Appeal said, no, you cannot even make that particular um, argument. There is no provision of the Constitution that talks about full circle of elections. The Constitution says failure to win. And there are two legs to this particular provision. The first is breach of any of the requirements for registration. Ask my, 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 my brother Tanko. The Commission wrote to all the police, registered political parties in Nigeria in, in November, telling them that we are coming for verification. What are we verifying? We are verifying their status as enunciated in Section 222 of the Constitution. Do they still maintain a registered office in the federal capital territory? Some of the political parties we called their telephone numbers, and it was re re ringing in a business center. We went to some of the places where they gave us as their office. They no longer exist. So those political parties that no longer maintain a registered office in the federal capital territory are not no longer obligated to exist. That is one. Secondly, of the 74 registered political parties, the only one Tanko has mentioned that one, a thing, he, he's claiming won a councillorship seat in a local government election is the Kowa Party. See, today, the Kowa Party has not supplied any document showing that he has a councillor in any part of Nigeria. If he supplies a document showing that he has a councillor in any part of Nigeria, the commission will restore it as a registered political party. But they have not shown. 
So what they are saying, in effect, is allow us uh, to exist on spending the time when we will be in a position to win an election. But you see, the truth of the matter is that the okay. Constitution allows you to exist as a political association, not as a political party. If you are not ready to win elections, you can exist as a political association. But when you are not ready to be for political power, you can come and register as a political party. So from your records, do you have any documents to show that core party hasn't won or they don't have any claim to what they say they have? To say what? To, to what they say they have. Yeah, do you have any records to support what they claim they have? Elections they've won? We verified, we went, uh, we wrote all the political parties in November to verify their status and also to verify whether they have won any elections in Nigeria. We have record of all the elections that have been conducted in Nigeria and we don't have any record whatsoever to show that the COA party has even a single councillorship seat in any part of Nigeria. So, Dr. Tango, uh, if that's the case then, does that mean that you were being misled when you said that uh, they claim that they had won elections if they can't provide documents? No, 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 not at all. COA explicitly told us at a meeting that they won election and they have records to show that. And in any case, uh, I, I, I actually expected that uh, um, in, in, in the local government where they won election, this record should be available at INEC. And, and they can contradict the ones that the letter that was written by COA party. And besides, the COA party, they can speak for themselves. I only cite them as an example of what they told us and the letters that they've written to INEC citing that particular uh, election that they said they have won. So uh, if, if they have that particular record, of course, they will present it to, to INEC. But I'm hearing it now that uh, I, I, I said they don't even have the records of the, they have the records of the election, but they are, they are not sure that any, or they, are, they can confirm that COA did not win uh, the, political, the election in the local government. But I know, as uh, the Koa Party uh, committee by Adebayo told us and shows us some of the letters that he has written to INEC saying this fact that they won election. So now it's for Koa Party now to give us the document and produce it and then hoping that INEC records too will be, uh, will be available to complement this particular uh, position of the Koa Party. But all I'm saying in essence is that we have shown that we have the capacity to win elections. And so, therefore, we should be given that opportunity based on laws. It's not as if probably we are begging. We are saying based on laws and the provision of the Constitution, we should be allowed to complete the full circle. Imagine, for example, if we say a political party that was registered three months, for elect three months before election, and then the election has been conducted, three months after you are deregistered, and you have not, you have not even contested any of the election. What, how do you but, justify that? All right, Mr. Kui, just briefly before we, we move on to... Uh, another matter, in addition to your response, first is the case for UPN. Now, they're not asking whether INEC has the powers to deregister political party. I think the case in question was that whether or not due process was followed. And I think the case for the advanced party is that, um, advanced Congress party is that they were saying that there was still a matter in court pending, yet INEC went ahead and deregistered those political parties. I think those are distinctive issues. Now, the question you should ask is, what was the matter that was pending in court? What matter was pending in court? Sanko just told you that they went and filed a, what they call a preemptive action to make sure that the commission does not exercise and carry out its constitutionally mandated powers of verification of the status of registered political parties. They went to court to claim that the conduct of the 1999 election should not be used as a yardstick for deregistering any political party because that the, that the election was not conducted uh, in accordance with the law, that the election was rigged, uh, and that the election, uh, that if the election was properly conducted, that they would, they would have won elections, uh, or they would have won things. That was part of the issue they raised before the court. The second issue they raised was whether Section 225A of the Constitution should be read uh, uh, conjunctively or disjunctively. These were the issues they raised. They never went to court to go and say, oh, don't be register us. That, that was not the issue before the court. The okay, but Mr. Okay. before the court are completely uh, well, uh, different. Yes. Was there an injunction pending 
before you went ahead to deregister this, the parties? Injunction against INEC. I'm, 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 I'm not aware. I'm, I'm but, they, not aware. but they said that there was an injunction pending against INEC for moving forward before INEC went ahead, and that if the matters had not been determined, why you still go ahead? I'm not aware that there was any injunction uh, against the commission. Okay. Now, let's switch on to the forthcoming elections in uh, the, we've heard IPAC there speaking about uh, the challenges and their concerns about conducting that election. And, you know, INEC had talked about whether or not they're going to move that election if parties don't conduct themselves properly. What is INEC's current position on the matter? The current position of the Independent National Electoral Commission is that we are courageously moving ahead to conduct both the Edo and Ondo governorship elections. And from our timetable, out of the 14 items on our timetable and schedule of activities for the Edo governorship elections, we have already implemented nine of them. As, and we have supplied all the non-sensitive materials required for the conduct of the Edo governorship elections. And we are moving ahead uh, uh, progressively to uh, do all the trainings uh, required for the conduct of the elections. So we are proceeding with the elections. We have told the political parties that they must stop the type of base and interpret language they are using and that they must de-escalate the issue of violence. And uh, we, from our records and from the evidence we have at that now, they are pulling back from where they are. And so we are moving ahead with the conduct of the election. I had expressed concerns about uh, the goings on in Edo in particular. Uh, what is the standpoint of uh, INEC on that one now, given that you said, I mean, if there was some unrest and uh, all of that, that the elections are not going to hold? So, what's the standpoint of INEC at this moment? Uh, in relation to what? In relation, in relation to you know, what you said, what INEC had said about uh, the goings on and the build up to the elections in Edo. No, the, the point we made is that if you look at the provisions of Section uh, 178, Subsection 2 of the Constitution, it gives a very, very tight timeline within which the Commission must conduct the election. And we have told them that based on our reading of Section 178, Subsection 2 of the Constitution, we must conduct and finish everything relating to the Edo governorship elections on or before the 13th day of October uh, 2020. And that if something happens, and we are not able to conduct these elections within the time frame given by the Constitution, there will be a constitutional crisis. And we told them that issues around violence, issues around hate speech, and also issues around the use of incendiary language may likely derail the conduct of the election. And I, I believe that the political parties have um, uh, 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 understand the language we are speaking, and they are pulling back from where they were before. And we believe that by the time we uh, move towards the period for the conduct of the elections, uh, that the atmosphere will be uh, such uh, that can guarantee the conduct of uh, uh, peaceful and credible elections. Well, Mr. Tanko, uh, there have been concerns about uh, the build-up to the elections, especially in Edo, uh, and a number of people have raised significant issues about the body language, the attitude, the build-up, especially the activities of the political class. What's your reading and what do you expect to happen? What would be your suggestion to the political class in Edo? There are three, yeah, there, there are three major uh, actors in this uh, uh, politicking. Uh, the INEC itself, the, the, politi the political parties, and then the security apparatus, and then the electorate. Let me add the, the electorate as part of it. Um, where an election is supposed to take place, it's supposed to be a democratically election that will be free and fair, devoid of violence. And in this case, we must commend INEC for putting up all the processes that they put on ground as regards to the issue of COVID-19. And we don't support violence in any form. And red flag has been, you know, touted long before even now, saying some of the areas in which we may have problems in Edo 
And the, game, the, the issues was clearly raised by the uh, former or present chairman of uh, uh, APC, uh, who was clearly in, 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 in a battlefront with his own uh, uh, predecessors, as, as the case may be. And that may spark off problem. And that is why we will support INEC to really waive the ma ma real enforcement uh, magic wand that any political party or politician that seems to you know, initiate and create any form of violence whatsoever should be sanctioned accordingly. Time has come now, we must be doing the right thing according to the books so that elections can be conducted at the poll and finish at the poll. We don't need to lose uh, lives and properties of individuals just because we are seeking for political power. It is not acceptable in any democratic position in the world. So we will continue to talk to our colleagues, but at the same time, of course, in the case of INEC, INEC has the right to invite the security agencies to come and checkmate any form of violence that may be created in such a way. But then the question is that the security personnel must be able to enforce that particular laws apprehending those who are involved or those who will be involved. It is even better to be preemptive to check those particular red flag areas and challenge the status quo before the election takes place so that the lives and properties of the electorate, they will be feel comfortable to come out and vote. If you notice, the downward trends of electorate coming out to vote is becoming alarming where you will have a registered vote of about 1.8 million people. At the end of it all, the people that will come out and vote may not be more less than 600 people to determine a an election that probably the winner may end up with 300,000 votes. That is unacceptable. But look at you look at statistics, you may end up having that is almost one plus one, uh, one and one of a third of the total population of registered voters that actually elect a governor because the All people right. are afraid of coming out because they are thinking that they will be violent. And we okay, must not repeat the case of what happened in Kogi. We All must right, be we, advancing from this particular we, position. We get your point, but I need to bring this back to Mr. Okoye okay, because I mean, still on that advanced Congress case. Uh, but it's here, I mean, if you check, you'll find that there's, there's several literature which indicate that there was actually a judgment, I beg your pardon, an injunction against INEC, which was by Honorable Justice Chikil of the Federal High Court Abuja, and INEC did not file any process to forget it, but went ahead and deregistered. Are you still saying you're not aware of this particular case? No, I'm, I'm not saying I'm not aware of the case of the Advanced Congress of uh, Democrats. What I'm aware of is the judgment that was delivered by the Honorable Justice Chikere uh, in relation to the matter they filed in court. And the, 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 uh, I see looked uh, and, uh, and, uh, and um, the judge looked at all the gamuts of the matter they presented before, before the court and made the determination that they didn't make out a case uh, uh, warranting the court. Uh, to exercise this discretion in their favor. So I'm aware of the judgment. I'm not aware of any injunction restraining INEC from carrying out his constitutionally, uh, 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 from carrying out his constitutional duty. Well, maybe I could just uh, sneak this in before we wrap it up. Um, since you said that election, the, the constitution does not, you know, give credence to uh, futuristic elections, will there be the registration of political parties after the Edo and Ondo elections? If, 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 as if today we make a determination that any of the existing registered political parties, any of the 18 registered political parties, no longer maintains an office in the federal capital territory Abuja, we will not even wait for the conduct of any election before the registering any, uh, that particular political party. If we check our books as of today and we find out that there's a political party that is existing that has not met the conditions and provisions set out in Section 225A of the Constitution. We will uh, uh, um, uh, uh, write to them, we will carry out verification, and if we determine that he has not uh, met the threshold, we will deregister that part particular political party without even waiting for the Edo governorship election. No, but some also argue that, for instance, Bayasa, when the case was still being challenged, Father say is still being challenged, and then actually went ahead and they registered those parties, some of which were challenging the governorship elections. <laughs> no, no, we, <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't register any political party that was in court um, uh, uh, challenging any, any election. So even if the matter is over, 
with the elections and then cases are still being challenged at the tribunal, can INEC proceed and the registered parties if in case uh, one of them were still challenging those, the outcome of the election? You, you, know, you know what we did was that we exercised a lot of discretion, we exercised a lot of patience. Uh, we were very circumspect in, in terms of the registration. We, we waited for, most, for the election petitions tribunals to go their full cycle uh, before we carried out uh, the last uh, uh, the registration exercise. So I think that the commission should be commended uh, for being very careful, uh, being very thoughtful, and also being uh, uh, clear on the application of the provisions of the Constitution. I think that we did what the law requires us to do, and we followed due process in carrying out our constitutional responsibilities, and we'll continue to do that. Okay, even though the courts don't think so, and that's why you want to appeal. But we'll wait and see how that eventually turns out. Well, thank you both for talking to <laughs> us this morning, Mr. Fisisukoye and Dr. Eunice Atanko.